I love traveling and I love exploring new places. That's why I never miss a chance to visit a new place. This weekend, we did the same. We visited a new place, we explored there and we really enjoyed. And in fact, it was a very good experience. Once I was done, I came back to my place and when I reached there, again, it was late. So I have to open up the door for me so that I can get in. When I pick up my phone, I found out that the phone is running out of battery. Again, I'm stuck out and there is no one to unlock the door for me. So what I can do was I can simply press the bell and someone will come and they will open up the door. So I did the same and finally someone opened up the door and I am in. Once I reached my place, I realized that this was not right actually because I was having this IoT remote. In fact, I was having this control of the smart door, but still I was stuck out. So I decided to make this portable IoT remote, which I can use as a backup plan so that whenever my phone is running out of battery, I can simply use it to unlock the door and I can get in. Now, this is all that I am going to show you in this today's video so that you will understand and you will also realize that how you can expand the battery life of your IoT remote. Now, let's move ahead and let's understand that how you're going to build it and how you're going to create it for you. So, let's move ahead. Hey everyone, Ashish Sani this side from Innovate Yourself. Welcome back to another exciting video in the series of ESP IDEA. In today's video, we are going to learn and we are going to see the demonstration that how do you create your own IoT switch to unlock your smart door system. And I'm sure that you have already seen in the beginning of this video that how and when do you actually need the IoT switch. So basically, let me tell you what exactly we're going to do in this today's video so that you will understand it better. So basically, we are kind of, kind of, you can say, transforming your application functionality to your IoT switch, which I showed you in the beginning of this video. So basically, in this, like you can say, we are going to transform to a physical push button instead the virtual button that we used in the previous video. So this is the entire functionality that I want to shift from application to the IoT switch so that I can unlock the smart door. So this is all that we will be doing. So let's move ahead and let's understand how do you build it and how do you finally uh, achieve this functionality. So let's move ahead and let's understand how do you do it. So let's move ahead. So everyone, you can see this is our IoT switch, which you can see right here. This is exactly the size of your ESP32. And in fact, whatever is the size of ESP32, this entire thing is your size of your uh, IoT switch. And in fact, right here, you can see what I just need to do is I just need to connect the external battery. In fact, it's a lithium polymer battery, which I have connected to the ESP32. And with that, you can see I have connected TP4056 uh, module, which I am using so that I can charge my 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery. And uh, with this, you can say it's gonna make it a rechargeable battery and you can use it for a very long time, right? So you can have a backup for this, right? So the entire circuitry part which you have in here, I'll uh, like uh, add a circuit over here and you can see on your screen, you can see the circuit diagram, like how I have connected this. So this is uh, what it is. And over here, you can see this is the boot button, which I will be using so that I can control the uh, like uh, door unlock system for simply unlocking the door by just simply pressing this button and for making it uh like power on and off what i have done right now is i have made a connections in this way so that i can use this particular jumper when i want to uh, give it a power supply and when i don't want i can connect it here if i want to connect to the power supply i'll connect it here so this is the way like how I have simply made this and the reason why I use this one is just because 
currently i was not having a switch so i just made uh, this uh, way to do it right so this is the way how i have done it so this is our iot switch all right everyone now let's understand the coding stuff so that we can understand the working and the functionality of the entire project so basically let me explain you like what exactly i'm going to do in this coding stuff so here we need one button just because we are about to shift the functionality that we were having in the application side to the iot product which we are going to design today right so for that what exactly we need is we need at least one button which we will be using like uh, to publish a request on the mqtt side so that your door will be unlocked successfully so basically for that we will require one push button on the esp32 side so that whenever we'll press that it will simply hit a publish request and accordingly it is going to unlock your door so in this entire code this is the functionality that i have already written so basically let me show you some of the things because most of the coding is going to be the same like we have seen in our previous videos but uh, in this i'm going to show you what changes i have made so that i can uh, explain you in a much easier way right so basically over here you can see like uh, i have simply used two uh, like topics one is this unlock which i will be using to hit a request or let's say to hit a publish request to unlock the door so you can see when uh, your mqtt will be connected it will simply hit a request or let's say it will hit a publish request on the unlock topic on the unlock topic and it will simply send a message as closed right and uh, when we will be hitting up the request uh, manually by pressing the button we will simply send open so that it will simply uh, synchronize with the coding which we have used for the other device right so this is the one so this one is for that and second topic i am using for the status so that we can accordingly see the functionality of this right so this is what exactly we are going to get and uh, over here uh, we have some other things like and over here you can see this is uh, some uh, condition that we have written so that we can accordingly give a status based on the status topic and accordingly we can display a message as well this one is actually for that and this is just like we have used in the previous one if you want you can keep it or if you want you can change it and also you can adjust the uh, delay as well right so this is what exactly we're going to do and one main and the most important functionality that we require here is this one because this is going to be the one which i will be using to simply publish a request whenever i'll press the button so basically this is a function that i have created and for uh, using this function what i'm doing is i'm not calling it like uh, somewhere in between my code in fact i am going to run it as a multi threading or let's say as a background process and for that this is a command which i have used in here so that i can simply uh, run it in the background and whenever this condition is going to be satisfied it will simply hit up publish request because i don't know like uh, when i'm going to press that button it can be any time right so that's the reason this is how i have to uh, like use it right and this is the way so this is the all functionality and this is the entire coding for this i hope you have understood this uh now let's understand uh, how to upload the code so that we can uh, further check the functionality and its live demonstration so let me upload the program so that uh, we can see how it works and during this process just make sure that uh, your esp32 is connected to your system so we are just going to use that and then we are going to connect to the system right now let's upload it because uh, in my case uh, the device is already connected to my system so i'm going to upload it now so let me do that all right everyone so now you can see that the wifi is connected or let's say the esp32 is connected to the wifi 
so basically now what exactly we have to do next is that whether it's actually sending up the publish or the subscribe request on the mvdd server which we are using right now so on your screen you can ignore these errors because this is not gonna affect us right now so we can ignore it for now so let me show you like whether we are actually going to get the results from this or not so for that let me open up the mqtd x so you can see over here i'm using mqtd x and i have the complete configuration uh set up over here like which mqtd server i'm using what support i'm using so all the stuff i have already added so i can connect it just to see like whether it's working or not right so uh, let me show you that so over here you can see I have the ESP32 with me. So let me show you the demonstration by pressing the boot button. So you can see this is the boot button. I'll simply press that and you will notice that it will publish a request on your MQTT X. So you can see I got the open request. That means the request has been sent so that my other device can read that and accordingly it will simply unlock the door so this is how exactly it is gonna happen so you can see if i'll press it again again i'm gonna get the open message one more time i can do it like this the final demonstration of how it's gonna work in life so let's see that so the door is locked now this is the one which i'll be using So this was it for today. I hope you have liked this video and if you have liked this video, do click on the like button and if you have any doubts and if you have any queries, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section. And also if you are new to this channel and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do click on the subscribe button so that you will not miss any videos from our channel. So this was it. See you in the next video. Till then, bye bye and happy learning.